Transglide at Strathclyde's new interlocking, interlinking, integrated transport system. Transglide, brand new trains at brand new stations on the brand new underground. Interchange with trains and buses, ride the brand new cars around. Transglide, take the brand new British Rail Line, Patrick down to Rutherford, connecting up your in and out lines, north to south and back again. Transglide, the under, over, inner, outer way to get about Strathclyde. Link up, link up, link up, link up, Transglide, let you fly wide. For seven years between 1979 and 1986, Glasgow had a brief vision of an integrated public transport system, a bus, train and subway network working together, serving the needs of the people rather than those of private enterprise. This was not a vision the incumbent Conservative government could get behind long term, however. The bus companies were privatised first and the others soon followed. Glasgow is the biggest city in Scotland and the disappointing reality of its transport system can be felt city-wide. I think if you look at the transport network, it's been designed for the people that have designed it. It's not been designed for the people that use it. Um, the, the bus services have been privatised and a lot of them have been cut. And for people living on the edge of Glasgow, uh, it's very expensive now for them to, to travel into the city because the, the bus fares are so high. At the same time, there's also not an equivalent um, uh, railway system that is as comprehensive and as, uh, and as uh, frequent as the buses are either. So for people living on the edge of Glasgow, there's a massive deficit in terms of their ability to equally participate in the city uh, that, that a, a, an integrated public transport network would, would help them to do. If Manchester can do it, why can't Glasgow? Manchester is a similar size. Um, you know, they, they've integrated their... their Metrolink, their buses, well, I think they're trying to, to bring their buses on board. Their ticketing system is there. They've got a plan for 2040 to bring everything together and to, they think about the city in a joined up way. They think about how all the modes of transport fit together. I'm just not seeing that from Glasgow and I'm not hearing it from any of the, any, you know, of the, of the leading voices in the cities. By changing the governance structures, then hopefully we can actually start to reduce the city's dependence um, on carbon emissions. Because let's face it, transport is one of the biggest contributors to uh, CO2 emissions. So we have to look at not just the air pollution and changes that can be made to reduce air pollutants, but we have to look at the wider pattern, including society, including waste. There's also a disconnect between a train timetable and a bus timetable, so you're looking at ways of having an integrated transport plan. You also want your towns, cities and centres to be good for pedestrians and tying that one with other active transport such as cycling, you need to have that infrastructure for cycling networks that are free from potholes, that are um, easy enough for people to use. And if you have an integrated transport system, and you build that in with an active travel network, then you can start to reduce the amount of cars in our city centres. As a city, one of the things we need to tackle is our transport network. We're already making good strides towards doing the right things. We've got a greater cycle network than we've ever had before. But what we need to do is to make that accessible to everybody. We need to make sure that for everyday journeys, everybody across the city, whatever neighbourhood they're in, they can walk, wheel, cycle, or use public transport very easily and make private vehicles the last choice rather than the first choice for many people. I think that would be a real sign of success and that's something we're working really hard towards. In terms of Glasgow and linking that to air pollution and COP, it needs to be more than just emission reductions. It needs to tackle social inequalities and making sure that any changes that they make and any proposals that they make don't leave any of our society behind. We need to have fundamental changes to the city. There needs to be strong leadership, there needs to be long-term planning, there needs to be bravery, risk-taking, um, and, and for whatever reason, um, you know, that's not been happening. So we need to kind of think of Glasgow, you know, Glasgow was an innovator, you know, in lots of things in the 20th century, right? Um, we, had a, we had a brilliant tram system up until the 1950s. Um, Glasgow was an innovator in mass public housing, in, in you know, local energy production when it, had its, you know, when it used to have its own electricity company back in the early 20th century. So it has been innovative before, why can't it be it again? Glasgow seems to have forgotten the common sense of the past. 
the COP26 delegates have been given a transport smart card, which begs the question, why can't we do the same for the people?